Hello from Blue Willow Bookshop in Houston, Texas. I am Kathy Berner, the event coordinator at the shop. We are so honored to host this virtual event celebrating the reissue of Alexis Hall's novel, Glitterland. Please note my nails. Please note those nails. Uh, Glitterland, part of the Spires series. Thank you so much to our partners at Sourcebooks for working with us on this event and on everything. So let's welcome Alexis to the conversation. Oh. Hi there. Hi. I actually remembered remember to click on mute, which is good. Hi. Well done. Personal I, growth. Yeah, absolutely. It does sometimes happen. <laughs> I'm so glad. And I'm so glad to be able to talk with you. Um, this book, uh, I've read, I can't even remember uh, how old the kids were when I read this book, but it was a really long time ago and they're now out of college. So. Oh, don't. Please don't. I know. But it was the first... I mean, this was my first Alexis book. And then I went to the Billionaire series and then I went back to Spires and then all, and just kept rereading those. And then Boyfriend Material happened and the mm -hmm. rest is history. Uh huh. It's just wonderful. Um, before we begin, I just want to thank everyone on the chat and all of your fans. They are some of the kindest customers we have the pleasure of working with. Oh. To, like 201, the notes are so lovely. They're so understanding. They work with us. So everybody who's listening, thank you. It is an utter joy to work with you whenever we can. And and now, Alexis, this is the part when you wave off all of my compliments to your work. Mm -hmm. um, your work is so wonderful. It's exceptional. Um, I've been thinking the past week, why do I love it so much? I love it because it's clever. I love it because I love it because it's thoughtful. I go down rabbit holes I never expected to go down, whether it's math, whether it's Scrabble Nabble, whether it's the only way is Essex. Mm -hmm. I, I, you just expand my you expand my world and my understanding. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. You are very, very welcome. So Oh, and also, everybody, I made Nanny Dot's cottage Nanny Dot's cottage pie on Monday, and it was delicious. So I highly, highly recommend the recipe. Fantastic! It do was you, so do you, good. Do you have cottage pie where you come from, or is that not? I had you no. Know, I, I I've heard of shepherd's pie, but I hadn't heard of cottage pie. It's the same with a different meat, basically. <laughs> okay, so it was delicious, and I think next time I might either add mushrooms or substitute mushrooms for the mints. Oh, very nice. So we'll see. It is. It was so, so good. Um, we had it two nights, and the second night, there might have been a ruler involved to try to make sure that both <laughs> people got an equal share because we both enjoyed yeah. it so much. Fantastic. Um, so let's talk about it. Happy re-release. Congratulations. This is so, it is so exciting. Why did you decide to re-release this? Oh, good lord! Um, uh, the offer was made essentially. Um, is, is, like, there's not really a there's not really more to it than that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Mary from Source Books kind of said we'd like to put out editions of of the Spire series that can be in physical bookstores and you know not self-published on amazon um and, and we appreciate that yeah no oh, no i know i i mean like the, the 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 really big plus for me is partly independent bookstores because obviously i like fundamentally asking independent bookstores to get stuff off amazon to stock their shelves is a little bit difficult because it's the competition um basically uh, independent bookstores and libraries are the really big kind of motivation behind that and of course the fact that it was you know it's putting in the audience and things but um so the offer came through and I accepted. Well, we are very glad that you did. So speaking of this reissue, so is the schedule going to be that you're going to reissue all the existing ones and then we get the new ones or will the new ones be scattered among the reissues? I believe, and I would need to double check this now, it's always everything is subject to change. This right. is existing books in publication order, then new books, particularly because my current new book schedule is already pretty full um as, you, as we have discussed many times at these events yes and we will get to once again mm -hmm. um that is wonderful there is um everyone who's listening there are extras on alexis's website um 
for the Spire series. And I spent the morning doing a massive deep dive into all of that, um, including some blog posts from 2013. We're going to send, Caroline's going to paste one in, but we're also going to send you the links. There's one where um, Ash and Darian are being interviewed by the blog host and it's absolutely mm -hmm. delightful and hilarious oh gosh i mean some of that stuff i will not genuinely will not have thought about since it was originally written so but the i mean i just you you know i just reread this yeah. last week and the voices from 10 years ago are seamless you okay. you kept it you kept it so you know speaking of that when you reread it or when you I'm assuming, obviously, you reread it to annotate yeah, it. Exactly. How did you decide what annotations to use? Oh, good lord! Um, mostly just kind of I mean, a, a lot of it was it was just me having fun, really. Um, I, I I will admit that I did not have a super detailed plan. Um, it was just a question of. I mean, like going back to it was a really odd experience because um you know as we started this with you saying you know how old were the kids when um uh, when i read this book and um uh, the sheer kind of slightly intimidating gulf of time that that involved looking back over meant the i was i was very much just reacting <laughs> reacting kind of in the moment um I think there, were, I, there wasn't a more detailed plan, I'm afraid. Well, but that's, so I think that's, I'm glad to hear that because when I read it with the annotations, I felt like you were in conversation with the reader. Yeah, that was very much the plan. I mean, I think, uh, I suspect something I'm going to say a lot today uh, is I'm a big believer in death of the author. Um, one of the things I re really wanted to be careful of, particularly with annotations, is I at no point did I want to say this is what this thing is about, this is what this thing means, this is what thing is, this thing is a metaphor for, because I'm a, because that's not that's not my job. Um, if you think something is supposed to evoke a particular thing or mean a particular thing or say a particular thing, then you are, you know, that is your reading. It's as valid as my reading. Uh, I, so, yeah. I I agree. And on on the Glitterland extras on your website, I found this quote. I believe that books are and should be fluid interpretive spaces shared equally by those who read them and those who write them. Yes. Yeah, that's very much not true of the last 10 years. But I but Oh I my really... God, who's got a bingo card? Okay. <laughs> oh my Melanie, you didn't share that with everybody? Oh okay. Oh. He asked, no, no, no. We're totally doing a bingo card. Oh God. I thought like no, no, for more I mean this is this is going ahead, but mortal follies, we're doing a we're doing a bingo card. Caroline, write that down, please. I'm writing it down too. Oh, oh my god. I don't know how I feel about that. Like I feel simultaneously like I've arrived and also like I'm just providing people with very similar experiences. Oh no, we're gonna no 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 no. We're gonna make it so fun. You, okay. Yes. <laughs> anytime. Anytime. I, and I'm going to say by extension, everybody on this call gets a chance to hear from you. It is a good time. And it does not matter if you say some of the same things. <laughs> Enough things you can do a nine by nine group. Is it nine by nine? How, how big a bingo card? It's typically five by five. Five by five. I'm so, oh my God, I'm so excited for this. Melanie, uh. thank you for your service. Okay, one oh, of the things okay. that you did for, for Glitterland was you created a playlist and you yeah. talk about that since it's 10 years later would you make any additions or corrections oh good lord um i really not thought about again uh, so much of this book i haven't thought about in a very long time um i don't think anything immediately jumps out playlist wise um from the last 10 years it's it's something i something i actually talk about so, so i really want to plug things for a book that a lot of people uh, for a version of the book that not everyone will have access to but one of the things I talk about the foreword is that I've looking back at it is very much I'm very much in a I'm not sure I could write this book today space so I feel like almost by definition everything on that playlist needs to be stuff that existed at the time um oh like okay if, I, if you see what if, if, you, if you see what I mean because it, yes it needs to evoke where I was then um like it's I'm not sure I begin to know how to update it without like that would involve doing some weird things with my brain I think um, yeah no that's a fair that's a fair point I had not considered that but I'm thinking like what would Darian like now oh good that's Lord. just where I went and P.S. 
he would love Harry Styles. <laughs> Just throwing that out Styles. there. <laughs> um, we're not digressing down that rabbit hole. We're not digressing down that <laughs> rabbit hole. Um, so one of the things that I found really interesting that you talked about on the playlist is the song order that oh, you yeah. had. Can you speak to that a little bit? That oh. was fascinating and made a lot of sense to me. So I think what I, again, this is trying to remember what I said um, uh, 10 years ago. So I think, I assume what you're talking about is the fact that I originally had it um, alternating. So right. it would have one kind of, I was about to say Ariane song, then one Dash song. But I mean, one Darian song, then one Ash song, then one Darian song. And that just gave me such emotional whiplash. I genuinely could not cope. So I had to do it all one then all the other it doesn't really matter which one then which but but if it didn't go in blocks i would again i'll just completely do my head in um there's a lot i'm going to talk about doing my head in i think a lot in this um in this conversation because uh it's, been, I say it's quite an emotional book about some quite heavy topics and partly because jesus time what how do you do it yeah no and it's it's i think it's unique to this situation it will not be unique as we move forward because other books will continue being re-released mm -hmm. but i agree it's a very strange yeah place and time to be um tracy i'm sorry looking at the chat real quick tracy we have several of these and several signed book plates left and also just as a reminder to everybody we have um beautiful book plates that Alexis and Mary designed and signed and sent to us. So any books you order, even if we don't have the themed custom book plate, we will send one of those. So there, Caroline put the link in and we'll send that email out. Sorry, I completely digressed again. Um, but it is a very strange, it's, it, it's strange, but it's also kind of wonderful. Yeah, no, it's kind of great, but um, in a very kind of head messing with way. <laughs> Absolutely. So talking about Spire's books, yes. um, Monica and Sophie, as well as I, would like to know if there are any hints about Fool's Gold, Niall and David's story. Oh, gosh, I ain't hints. Um, so, uh, so Niall's a terrible person. Um, I, mean, I, mean, know, okay. I mean, okay, yeah, fair enough. Ni Niall is a complicated person um, and does not behave well in relationships and obviously that is something he is going to have to work on in the book but that is not something he is going to have fixed at the start of the book and yes like we terrible is harsh but um uh, so um there might if i say there might be some elements in it people don't like that sounds really um uh, it's it's um do not expect him to behave well throughout um like that's it, fair it's, a, it's it's going to be very much a book about a it's very much going to be about a book about a person who's kind of not really ready for a relationship slowly coming to a place where he's less not ready for a relationship um and in some ways that might involve making some quite bad mistakes caroline and i call niall a polarizing character i think that's fair <laughs> Because thank you, Nicole. Yes, um, I I feel very conflicted about him, but he you know he can be very charming, but he just had such I don't know that he's had a great experience in relationships. Yeah, I mean, being with Ash when Ash was the way Ash was, because yeah. I don't know where people are in the book. Yeah. Um, I cannot imagine yeah. the emotional toll, and I think it's fair to say that, yeah. the, the emotional toll it took on Niall. Oh, yeah, of course. So um, I will say at the at the end of the book, when he and David meet, mm -hmm. I that was a great meet cute. Thank you, Jen. I know. We, and Max is also very polarizing for Caroline and me. Yeah. We, um, oh, interesting. Yeah. Anyway, uh, those characters are great, and I'm excited. So is um, 
rough ride coming first or is fool's gold coming first so again subject to change current plan rough ride is intended to come first um uh, for those who haven't followed rough ride is uh dom the dom's book um and then fool's gold will be after that so excited that this that this the universe just keeps expanding but of course staying contained yeah so that's oh it's so fantastic um, Rose had a great question. Ever since reading Glitterland, I have wondered how Darian would handle Ash spiraling into a depressive episode when he's around. Would he understand? Would he try to help? Would he be able to help? So I think that's um, uh, even go cards out. Um, <laughs> that's a death, it's a death of the author question. Um, I think the book makes the case that Darian is as well placed to handle it as anybody else but also mental health is complicated and relationships are complicated i think one of the things is that like um so i think what's really important about the whole sort of arc of the book and again not everyone's in the same place is that um just because someone is a bit um, <laughs> is from a a deprecated culture that doesn't mean they can't cope with complicated things. And that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of quite specifically addressed in the text. Um, on the other hand, just because you really care about someone and are sincerely trying to make a go of it with them, it doesn't necessarily mean it will work. I think he's got as good a chance as anybody. Um, and of course, it's not just about it's not just about how he handles it the first time it happens it's how he handles it the second time the third time the fourth time the fifth time the sixth time um and these are really specifically questions i don't want the text to answer the questions i want readers to answer for themselves so i don't think there is an easy answer to it um, but i think he's got a good chance, as good a chance as anyone i think that's what matters i i agree um i'm seeing a bunch of comments fly by and just talking about his understanding of himself his self-worth his common mm -hmm. sense his sweet like at the mm -hmm. core he's so sweet yeah. um which makes what happens later one of the most painful things i've read uh -huh. you pulled that off beautifully uh, the you. way they were you just saw it coming and you were like come on and you whacked us with it anyway holy cats um it was it's just sorry i'm just gonna keep hugging my book while we're talking um here go, sophie we're going back to talking about kind of the the re the reissue uh -huh. what were the biggest cha changes you made in editing originally and what were the biggest changes you made in editing this time um so originally um the biggest i mean it's not like change isn't even quite the right way like the, the ending i went through and through and through like more times than i could count um especially because i was on quite a tight deadline at the time um like because it was the again wasn't actually the first book i wrote for that publisher but it was the first one that was published and it was it was the first one that kind of had a really serious kind of emotional arc mm -hmm. and that was again because i'm british I, I, i'm sorry I, I play up the i'm british thing and obviously like you know countries aren't monoliths um but i you know i like to to to, to cite my nationality as as um as an excuse to my idiosyncrasies um actually kind of authentically engaging with the emotions of that sequence was actually quite hard for me um I just, it was partly because um <laughs> it's not really how i communicate and it was partly because uh because the book's very relentlessly from um um what's the um it's very relentlessly from ashley's point of view and so i was also quite heavily in his point of view and i think the um the really helpful kind of i think thing that was finally articulated to me by editor at that point was that i think I kept rewriting it and rewriting it and rewriting it, but I was so embedded in Ashley's perspective and what Ash wanted that I had lost sight of Darian as a human being and what Darian needed from that scene. Okay. I think, um, so, so the reason you have the, the meaningless signifier conversation is that, um, like, <laughs> I, it's, it's almost sort of, yeah, it's, it's almost me arguing with myself in a way about why that was <laughs> necessary. Um, 
like I, 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 I say one of the things that people who are um, uh, again I don't know these are bingo cards or not um one of the things that you know, I'm, uh, regular readers might notice is I, I'm I'm kind of 50 50 on on IL wise in the books um <laughs> and um and Glitterland didn't originally have one um and I was quite resistant to it having one but it definitely needed one um, so that was that was the hard thing with the book originally. Um, again, there's I told you there's a lot of like kind of brain breaky stuff in this because like that that was a right. lot of, that was a lot of like mental work as was having the playlist with all the songs as as is thinking about it ten years later. Um, with the with the new edition, I really want to stress that any changes are minimal. They don't really change the story. Um, it's a couple of word choices updated. Um, some sentences just changed for flow, or there are some bits where like. Sometimes uh, looking back, there are bits I would look at and think, okay, I get what I was trying to say, but I don't think that thought follows through. And that's been like, like tweaked. Uh, there are a couple of scenes that, again, at the time, um, the publisher is quite keen to foreground a central couple because it's a romance. And um, there are a couple of scenes involving uh, friends of various sorts that I cut back more than I really wanted to. And things that I'm, particularly if you've read my other books, you'll know that I I like having protagonists interact with people that aren't the romantic interests. I think it's really important in romance not to act like your relationship with your partner is the only relationship that matters. Um, in particular, like the one like specific edition that I think is worth mentioning is. I think quite a lot of it. So there's a bit where Ash is talking to Amy about Max and a lot of readers with the original edition got the impression that Max had actually cheated with Niall. Um, and it's sort of, it was kind of clarified in that scene that that had not happened. Um, but uh, that scene then got cut back for like focusing reasons. And uh, that's clear now. Also, uh, in the bonus materials, you just get to read a little short story that is that scene from, you know, uh, from from our perspective. So again, it, 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 it's very clear what went on there now. Um, although obviously that becomes a complex one where, because of course, again, the author applies. If you read the um, uh, if you read the original edition and Max is a cheater is your head canon, then that is a valid head canon for you to have. Right. The fact that I released an edition 10 years later and a short story that contradicts that 10 years later that's my problem not your problem <laughs> absolutely it's it's I, and i really appreciate um death and your how much you lean into death of the author because i think that's important with so much with art in general mm -hmm. because if if we have a reaction to a song or our, or or a piece of art whether it's story paint whatever and we draw all this significance from our personal lived experience and then someone were to tell us we were wrong yeah no it's really difficult I, uh, obviously there there are situations where i think it's fair enough like apparently like um like oh uh, god uh, like nine inch nails keep having to tell the alt right that they're not on their side <laughs> and I think that's fair enough. But, like, I agree with you. I, no, that I'm totally on board with. But like, but, if I were to be like, "Oh, this song makes me think about my partner." Yeah. And they're like, "Nah, it's I, not about. It's not about yeah, that." Exactly. <laughs> um. No, but no, I'm totally with you. Nine Inch Nails, you go to town. Um. Okay. So, um, I want to talk about Essex. First uh -huh. of all, um, in your is it the epigraph? Is that what it's called? Oh, I think the, the quotey bit at the beginning. The I quotey bit at the beginning. Right, yeah. So I had not heard of Amy Childs and I got to go down the <laughs> most delightful Amy Childs rabbit hole oh, and listen to some podcasts and watch some YouTube stuff because I'd never heard of Toei. Um, <laughs> I think we call it Towie. Towie, <laughs> sorry, Towie. <laughs> sorry, sorry. My pronunciation right. will never... I I don't think it's got an official pronunciation. Towie, that's fine. Um, I think they call it Towie too. You're right. Yeah. Um, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. And but Sid has a really great question. What does Essex mean to Ash? Yeah. And like, what does he associate with it? Um, just for context, Ash does not live in England and is assuming that this is a class bias or a region bias, but wants to understand it 
from Adam. Ash's point of view. Just sorry, clarify. Obviously, Ash lives in England. The person asking the question doesn't live in England. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> to clarify, Sid does not live in England. <laughs> Ash lives in England, and uh, Sid uh, wants to know what Ash thinks of Essex. Just double checking in case those who haven't read the book are very confused. Um, I mean, this becomes a complex one because it does ultimately come about like essentially offensive classist stereotypes, um, which is difficult. Um, I think, I think probably every country has their version of this. Like my understanding is that like like the song Gangnam Style. My understanding is that that that's based on specific assumptions, cultural assumptions, and career about that particular region, and I know nothing about it. Um, uh, someone here is. Saying um uh, so, so saying Indiana um I think like to like the 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 I go Florida in you know, a place of knowing nothing about America or you could go New Jersey I could go New Jersey yeah like 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 New Jersey Shore in fact um I think I think somewhere between those two I think there's a lot of people here from New Jersey is part of the reason that I am um but okay, and, and again then, no offense intended to any region of the US or of England. <laughs> well, I think what's um uh, yeah, if, if they're origin New Jersey, then it's um but, but but obviously like but like the the point here, of course, is that actually New Jersey is a is a state, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, just double checking because I guess no. track of what, what all of your different divisions are. Um we have a lot. Yeah. Um and it is a large, diverse place with a range of different people in it. Um and you know, Essex is a lot. Yeah, Essex, Essex is a county with literally millennia of history going back to the East Saxons, hence the name. Um, you know, Florida is huge, and not everybody in it is an alligator or a retiree <laughs> or Florida man. Um, but Essex is one of those places that has um, it has a reputation for being the kind of place where people have more money than class in a country where class is considered really important. And again, it's it's difficult. One of the things that's interesting about Essex is, and again, my please take this with a pinch of salt. My knowledge here is you know, driver cultural cultural osmosis. Is it's one of the working class areas that did reasonably well out of Thatcherism. Um, so you have um, so you have a reasonable number of people who have. And again, this is not everybody there because. Regions are diverse, um, but you have a reasonable number of people who did economically well and are therefore quite aligned with the economic right, but are still culturally very working class and are therefore perceived as being very vulgar. Um, again, I think Jersey Shore is probably the way to go. It's difficult because we've got a UK reality TV show called Geordie Shore, which is um, uh, obviously not in Essex, but town is very similar. Um, you then got you then have the the Essex girl and Essex lad or Essex man stereotypes. Um, those are very gendered and quite different. Um, and yeah, so um, so the Essex girl stereotype is um, oh god um, is classist and sexist basically because it's basically um, it's uh, it's poorly educated and sexually promiscuous, which is um, like yeah, and that's um, and and first of all, there's nothing wrong with being either. I mean. Be it, right. Like, poorly educated is a complicated one because, like, education systems should be good, but at the same time, and equitable, nothing, and equitable. But there is nothing intrinsically wrong with not being the kind of person that went to university because not everybody wants to go to university, or, or should, is, or should, or is drawn to academia. Um, Essex men again tend to be um, seen as again kind of men with more money than class, um, often a bit, often kind of playery often kind of um like one of the things really interesting actually is that a lot of those stereotypes these days like basically they're the kind of people that do well on love island um <laughs> like, and actually with with modern reality tv and influencer culture in some ways that's become a lot more normalized which in a lot, in a lot of ways is kind of like, sun's out guns out is an excellent way to put it um although of course in the uk it's more like just guns out irrespective of whether the sun's out or not um it, and it's complex because, like, fundamentally, there is nothing intrinsically wrong with having a sun's out, guns out mentality. There is nothing intrinsically wrong with coming from, and part of the part of the point of what I was trying to articulate with Little Land is that actually just because Darian and his friends and his family don't share Ash's 
cultural preconceptions that doesn't make them lesser as people and um, one of the things we conversations we literally just had was the whole you know how well set up is darian to deal with you know ash having a depressive crisis and the answer is probably better set up than a lot of ash's friends because a lot of ash's friends are overeducated wankers um yes and uh and again it's it's complex um because you know it's it's a like the with that kind of stereotype it gets really difficult as well because there are people who feel that stereotype is applied to them when it shouldn't be and therefore resent the existence of the stereotype at all and resent the existence of people who they feel embody the stereotype but there are also people who kind of embrace the stereotype and are like look this is the way i am but this is the amy charles quote which is like you know we've got our fake and our fake boobs and our fake nails and that's great and that's that is a complex situation to engage with and to navigate um because i'm not gonna if if if, if someone is from essex and feels that that's culture existing within Essex is damaging to them as a person from Essex I'm not going to say it's not um but at the same time it's not really my place as someone who isn't to look down on that and it's um yeah kind of that but it's basically I mean a lot of my characters are basically just learning to be less of a wanker um yeah like who would I want to go have coffee drinks cottage pie with mm -hmm. Darian and Chloe exactly oh my god that would be amazing it would be amazing um actually i i can't do it right but I, it would ha i would have to say it in darian's voice which i can't do because no, my I'm, accent not, I'm not gonna crap. do it either it'd be appropriate if... no it would be and i just know but oh i just adore him so much and and chloe just for being so straightforward mm -hmm. and these are my expectations you either meet them or you don't there you go Mm -hmm. Um, I loved someone just said that Harry from Rosalind Palmer is more Bruce Springsteen <laughs> and Darian it, because Bruce Springsteen is also from New Jersey yeah. and Darian oh, really? is more the short. Yes, he is. New Jersey, New Jersey is a fascinating state, but uh -huh. we're not going to digress down that rabbit hole because we have other things to talk about. Um, <laughs> okay. And this is from Andy. Yes, John Bon Jovi is also from New Jersey. All right. Now. We're stopping on the New Jersey comments. Um, Andy, will we see more of Hugh Hastings in the Spires universe in the future? Specifically, will he face some form of justice? And um, P.S. Like, I have all <laughs> kinds of violent things to say, but I'm not going to do that because that man is just a butthead. Unlikely. I think the thing is that, again, I don't want to be too, um, uh, I don't want to be too, what's the word? Um, too glib but the thing is buttheads exist um they and, absolutely do but they oh and and i i think one of the things is and obviously like kind of i mean you know particularly you know americans who have been watching you know the unfolding of everything in america over the last you know decade is that um i don't think we live in a world where buttheads intrinsically face justice no we um, don't i think by and large buttheads get away with being buttheads um <laughs> a part, and part and part of that is also i mean to, to be to be most to, to, be, to, to, to be briefly kind of i don't know whatever 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 you want to characterize me as i think all of it is part, part, partly that like i don't think and i'm going to stick with buttheadness because i think it's a nice non-judgmental non-threatening way of putting it I think to an extent, to me, I like to take the approach that the problem is buttheadedness in general, if you like, endemic or institutional buttheadedness, rather than in, like the buttheadedness does not exist because of individual buttheads. It exists because we live in a society that normalizes buttheadery, if that makes sense. I completely agree that that makes sense. And I just, oh, man, I was not thinking kind thoughts about him when I was reading that section. Um, a little lighter, uh, Dobbs and Melanie both asked about the Glardigan. If hypothetically someone were to attempt to knit a Glardigan, what color should it be? And can someone please develop a pattern? So everybody out there, if you knit, come on, let's go. But Alexis, what color is the Glardigan? So um, uh, this, this might surprise you, but it's black um because it's it's i i know is there sparkle of, in it like is it shimmery black or is it just it's, like a matte black so the i think one of the things that maybe 
and then, as always, death of the author. The sorry, sorry, what I should say is death of the author. The Gladigan is whatever color you want the Gladigan to be. But notably, like although Ash is initially dismissed about Essex Fashion Week, it is, a, it is a small but proper fashion show. The people that um, the the people, you know, Darian and Darian's friends, really care about fashion. And you want to, if you want something that looks classy and you can wear with anything, you, you want are it right. Black. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll give you that. There, um, there, there was, and I've lost the image now, but there was a a thing I did see on a catwalk that was basically like a high fashion knitwear thing that was basically a gladiator. It, it was black. Like, um, so in my head, and I should deeply stress, this is essentially my head canon. The gladiator is black because totally. again, because to go back to the to the stereotypes thing of the class thing, um. These people, that, you know, having no class in the sense of not being particularly interested in Shakespeare isn't the same as having no class in the sense of not being particularly interested in the stuff you're actually interested in. These people know fashion. They absolutely and do. The LBD, I suppose it'd be the, the LBG never goes out of style. <laughs> um, by the way, someone suggested, let's see if Tom Daly can make us a glory again. <laughs> I vote yes. <laughs> Who's reaching out to him? Let's go. Um, but thank you. That I, okay? I I completely agree with the reasoning in your head, Canon. I had seen Fantastic. it a little different, but I, I now, yeah, I can understand why you would. Um, let me see. We're gonna shift a little bit. We're gonna okay. actually talk about something other than spires. Um, okay. AJ would love to let you know that they are eagerly awaiting the last Kate Kane book. Is Kate named after Batwoman? Uh, no, that was an accident. It was an embarrassing accident, but it was an accident. Um, it, I, I mean, it's, it's a. Sometimes I talk about. Um, uh, if I use the phrase C courses A and B in these things, again, if not, put it on your put it on your bingo. Oh, now people have told me there's bingo cards. I'm going to be watching everything I say for bingo cards. Um, P.S. Like, I'm. What we're going to do is Caroline's going to develop the bingo card and send it out to everybody who registers, and you and I are not going to know what's on that bingo card. <laughs> Oh god. Um, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. So um uh like the reason she's called Kate is because it's alliterative names are a pulp thing. She's a pulpy character. It's like Sam Spade, but it's also like Clark Kent or um uh, or oh Lois Lane for that matter. How did I miss that? So it's yeah. So it's the it's, alliteration. It's it's, it's 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 just because short snappy alliterative names are a pulp and that's also why a lot of superheroes have those names. Um, also, I think weirdly, because like a couple of the people that worked for DC specifically, like really specifically had trouble remembering character names if they didn't alliterate. So oh. it's, um, and there are, a, a, and so it's kind of a, a I mean, I'm saying great minds think alike is particularly, um, a particularly self aggrandizing thing to say about one of the biggest franchises in the world. But like it's, um, um, but it's a, if you're thinking about a, a feminine coded name that has that, kind of alliterative Sam Spade vibe and is a little bit sharp, you go to Kate Kane very quickly, hence Kate Kane. But it's um I I I I kept men meaning to lampshade it in a later book, especially because um there is no way Eve wouldn't have brought it up constantly. Especially because I believe Kate Kane is specifically the lesbian black Batwoman as well. Like she's the, the Batwoman who is canonically gay. Um but no it was a it was a complete accident. In terms of um in terms of looking forward to the next book um just to be super open and clear about this, um, because of the situation with publishing and the, where the rights are, uh, the only way the only way the next Kate Kane book is coming out is if I self-publish it. That is something I do fully intend to do, but as we've established many, many, many times, my uh, my, my docket is incredibly full. Um, the thing about self-publishing is uh, there are there are people who it works incredibly well for. I am not one of those people. I love writing in the sense that I love putting words on paper and telling stories. The actual business of actually making a book into a, an appropriate format to be able to be sold on Amazon is an unbelievable pisser, and I don't really? like doing it. Um, I mean, I, just, I, mean, I, just, no I mean, I mean, I, I will say, like, you know, for me, but then I find things unbelievable pisses very easily. Um, but no, but I didn't. It never occurred to me that the formatting would be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you anything do. other than straightforward i mean there's i mean the, the professional typesetting is a thing um, of course it is yeah. but um, it's like yeah. i had not because yeah. i don't 
deal no, with it's, you. No, it's, um, it's one of those things where it's, I, my, the, a rule I like to live by is that if you ever think, if you ever think how hard can it be about something you haven't done, the answer is horrible, I think. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. And Absolutely. Um, as a result of that, it means that it's I, I'm still seeing it as a when rather than if, but I will get back to Cape 5 when my publishing schedule has slowed down, um, which will be probably not for at least a couple of years, um, just because of where I am with with other series and with contracts. Um, and speaking of that, yes. you provided the perfect segue. Oh, then okay. no second. <laughs> So up next, April, I believe, is something spectacular. Uh, I believe that is correct. Um, although, again, I, oh God, my, my, my dates go in one ear out the other. For me, right. So I, uh, I, I'm, I'm let, pretty I confident think, on that. I think it's about April, yeah. Um, and then after that, and again, great book where I, I loved something fabulous, something spectacular. We, I will let you and Mary discuss what's available for that when it's available, mm -hmm. um, because it is not, it is published by Amazon slash yeah. Montlake, so Blue Willow will not be involved in that. Yeah. But we still love it. P.S. I'm still ordering it from the distributor, and I'm listening <laughs> to the audio. So there you go. Yeah, fine. <laughs> um, next is after that is Mortal Follies. Yes. Oh my God. I'm so excited. I don't know if y'all have seen the cover yet, um, but it is on Blue Willow's website uh, on the link where you can order all of Alexis's books. And I'm debating like, okay, what nail color am I getting for that one? Because <laughs> it is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. Can you, do you want to talk about that at all? I mean, I, I can. I, there's, again, um, with you being a cast, there's not a huge amount I can say that um, uh, has already. Uh, it's Queer Magic Bridgerton is the is the pitch. Queer Magic Bridgerton. Ha. Huh. Um, it's um, it's about uh, I, I try, try to think how to put it. It's about, it's about a young Regency lady and a um, a, a, a Slightly, a slightly, but not particularly older, older Regency lady who is um uh, who isn't a duke but gets called one because people are mean, uh, and it's about a curse, and it's narrated by a technically unnamed hobgoblin who definitely isn't Puck. Um, it's um oh the other the other version of the elevator pitch is that it's um it's what if Midsummer Night's Dream was canon? That's the other way to think about it. Also, it's just really flipping good. Oh, I'm glad. It's it's really 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 good. Um. So again, you can pre-order that through us. We will be doing an event with Alexis for it. I don't know the dates yet, but we will let you know uh, as soon as um, we get that all set up. Probably not today. Um, okay, and then the London Calling series. Yes. What's next in the London Calling series? The next in the London Calling series. Um, okay, so I think there's also a brand name issue. No, there's not. Sorry, I'm. I, 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 there, we had back we had backstage conversations about whether the name London Calling was being used for just the Luke and Oliver books or for the expanded universe, and they flip forward, flip flop back on that in some complicated ways. Um, in this series, that I think we're going to currently carry on calling London Calling until sourcebooks send me an email and say you used the wrong name for the series. My sincerely apologize if that happens. Uh, is ten things that never happened, um, which is uh, it's it's the amnesia trope, everybody. I'm so excited. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so that's if you include this, which I know, if you include Glitterland, which I know you don't always include Glitterland because it's a re release, but yeah. I count it as a book because it's yeah. a book that was released. That's for this year? Yeah, I believe so. Glitterland, spectacular follies. Yeah. Things. Things. Spe spectacular follies things sounds like a really bad awkward. Broad, broad, broad I want to call it spectacular amnesia follies. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that but, needs to be, that, that, that's in the wrong order <laughs> i know it's in the wrong order but it still sounds good yes it is. um is next year four books um oh god i don't know i've lost i i i have i am okay i would not in a space to think about next year so, okay um, we're just doing I this year four books I this year i think it's at least i think it's at least three i'm not completely certain oh good lord that makes I've, me really happy yeah oh, thank you so much um <laughs> it makes me slightly worried but <laughs> It'll shake out. Um, it's it's all going to be good, and we're very grateful. I uh, I know there's at least two I can think of off the top of my head. Well, there's flood. 
Yeah, there's floods. Okay, so, so um, there's um, uh, there's uh, the ultra lane says the pots. There's flood material. Um, so that's at least that's at least three. Wait, 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 wait! You said we said fall. No, we said we said flood, and then you said something, and then you said father material. Uh, Audrey, was Lane's, the... Audrey Lane stirs the pot. So I think that's I think that title has been dropped before in these things. Like, go, go it through. has been, but that just I'm just remembering. I'm just reminding <laughs> myself what's coming. Yeah. It's it's so good. Um, and I know that this is a lot. I know that it means that it's a lot on you, but. I'm speaking for everybody when I say thank you for your service. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, that, I, the, the title that people are spamming into the chat, I'm sorry, spamming is a read detrimental, but this title people are helpfully putting in chat is correct. Yes, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that is going to be an awesome one. Cannot wait. Okay, so I'm going to move to some submitted questions. Um, oh my gosh. And and we'll, I'll probably try to wrap in like 10 minutes because I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, this one from Monica. Does Alexis Hall hate author events as much as AA Winters? Are you being held against your will? Um, no, this is actually genuinely really nice. Um, I, I, so one of the things that's in the annotations is I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not great at talking about my own books, but I'm relaxing into it. Um, and Blue Willows has been really good at making me feel welcome. So I am pretty much okay. That is very nice of you to say because it is these are always super super fun um amber would like to know how much bake-off you have watched and i believe you only watched early bake-off yeah i i i slight i i feel a bit bad about this i've heard good things but i didn't follow it to channel four partly because it's like for, i had real problems with 4od like for um uh, sorry 4od is the channel falls on demand thing and that it kept just not it would get to an ad break and then just cut out and then you'd have to watch a million ad breaks so, and it's better now i've watched things on it since but i've not really kept up with the channel four series so i've only really watched the um uh, the, the, the 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 bbc series do you have any favorites from the bbc series oh good lord um i'm incredibly bad at having favorites um again if that's on your bingo card uh congratulations <laughs> Um, I will say what that was interesting to me is apparently on the Bake Off when it airs in the UK, there are ads. There's no ads when we watch it. Oh, um, uh, I, I would assume so, uh, in if it was on Channel 4, yeah, there'd be ads on Channel 4. Um, uh, there's uh, is it on PBS over there? Is that, no, it's on Netflix. Oh, of course. Oh, well, Netflix is, um, uh, yeah, is a streaming service. So, um, uh, yeah, there you go. But it's just, it was so. Oh, God, I'm digressing. There's this podcast called Sticky Bun Boys that has David and Michael from the series that David won a while ago. Yeah. Um, and they have recapped the past two series episode by episode. Oh, cool. And and then they go into dating advice mm -hmm. and they are hilarious. Mm -hmm. And so but they also give really good advice, especially Michael. I mean, not that mm -hmm. David's any slouch, but anyway, I'm digressing, so I'm getting back to this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, okay. Emanuela wants to know about the scheduled re-release of other Spires books, so we've kind of talked about that. Next one is Flood, and then, again, I just direct you to Alexis's website, which is so beautifully and intuitively organized. You can find you. anything you want there. Um, okay. Speaking of the great Spires from Emily, speaking of the Spires extras on Alexis's website, as you're thinking about what to do with your blog archive, Emily would like to offer one little vote to bring back the old posts. Um, they only discovered your books this year and really relished reading their way through the previous posts, the Hugh Grantathon, the board game reviews, the Bob and Z ratings of TNG episodes. That's right. I, I that's something I'm definitely thinking of. Um, it's just uh, the reason I put it on hiatus is that I'm just so busy and I really didn't like, I don't like having things hanging around that I'm not actively doing stuff with. Um, I can see an advantage of having the archive up there. It's just that like, while it was there, I was just this voice in the back of my head going, you haven't uploaded the blog in a while, you haven't uploaded the blog in a while, you haven't uploaded the blog in a while. Oh, um, yeah. And that was kind of, kind of messing with my head. Okay, messing with my head is kind of the theme of the day. Again, put it on your bingo cards. Um, please don't put that on your bingo cards. That would actually be a bit insensitive, I feel. No, um, I agree with you. That's not going on the bingo cards. Caroline, I know I'm not seeing the bingo card, but that's not going. Um, 
but once the schedule eases up, um, I'll have a think about whether blocking is something I want to come back to. It's something I do enjoy doing. Um, it's just that it's something I can't really enjoy doing right now because there's so much other stuff to do at the moment. Um, and therefore, I kind of put it in this little Totally little fair. Box. So speaking of having a lot to do, mm -hmm. any chance we will see another chapter in Gay Bought by the Billionaire anytime soon? Um, the answer can be no, and this is yeah, not to, this is not to cause any pressure. This is no merely to tell you how much people enjoy it. Fantastic. Um, it's still on the to do list. Um, it is slightly higher up to do list than things I don't actually have to format for um <laughs> for actual publication. Um, it's lower on the to do list than anything I have a contract for with a publisher for obvious reasons. Totally fair. Uh, so totally as always, fair. Uh, not on hiatus, just on uh, shit. I've got four books coming out this year. No. I completely get it. Now I'm I'm digressing because I just saw a comment. Is on your web, on your Instagram, is there? I don't know, Mary. I'm talking to you at this point. You know the little things down here. Oh God, this is so bad. I'm just I'm such a I'm such an old person. Um, the things where you can save your stories. If you could save all of the Marvel commentary <laughs> in one of those stories. I think someone mentioned it going by in the comments, and my gosh, that would just make my day. <laughs> I will look into that. Um, here's another question. Will all of the other re-releases also, the Inspires, have bonus material? Uh, yes, that is the plan. Uh, very Excellent. Very um, but yes, that is the intent. Excellent. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this. Da, 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 da. Oh. This is from Eros, and I think I'm going to wrap with this one. One of my favorite themes in your work is humility, okay. where a character is on some kind of journey of realizing they don't have it all figured out, no matter how clever they are. Eros feels this is central to Ash's character arc. What they like about this theme is that it pushes people from an intellectual idea about themselves to an emotional relationship with others. When you're writing, how do you think about those moments where a character moves from a selfish place to a more generous one? Oh God, with great difficulty. I mean, I mean that's essentially the um like uh, that's basically what happened with the the ending of Glitterland, but I had to rewrite many, many, many right. times. So um, it's it's oh, yeah, it's just hard. It's just um, I don't think there's a specific technique or a specific um approach or methodology. It's just and I think um, it's about confronting those needs within that character and trying to be emotionally honest with the character and to allow the character to be emotionally honest with themselves. Um, which is I appreciate that's really freaking vague. Um, and I'm sorry. It is vague, but I had not. Eros, I really appreciate your aspect of that. That is one of the things about your work, Alexis, that appeals to me so much, oh, is the emotional honesty. Thank you. And the acknowledgement that there is a need for growth and mm -hmm. the acknowledgement that there is nuance and the acknowledgement that not everything is right for every person. Mm -hmm. And because we can have that kind of nuance, which does not always happen in fiction, Mm -hmm. and is not always as deftly handled in fiction that's one of the reasons we love your book so much thank you so much you are so welcome i'm going to wrap with one question for myself personally and this is going to digress i'm sorry as y'all know i love tabbing <laughs> books good god that's lots of apps it, but but it makes this is so what i do like when i'm reading a book for an event when i'm going to do it with alexis like I plow through the book just to read the plot, just because I'm excited, just mm -hmm. because it's a new Alexis book. But then I go back and I reread and I tab what resonates with me. So people, we're going to put this in the email that goes to everybody who registered. If you have specific kinds of tabs, because like I get the Scotch tape brand tabs at Target. And then I found these really fancy tabs from Ooh. cloth and paper, but I want a different color palette because I'm going to need new color palettes for new Alexis Hall books. <laughs> So if anyone has recommendations, I'm going to ask you to email me if you have tab recommendations. So just look out for that part of the email. Um, we're at the top of the hour. 
we have spent a glorious time with you, my friend. Um, lovely being here. Thanks so much. We're just... I am so grateful that your work is in my life and in the lives of everyone who is watching. Mm -hmm. That is really, that is really sweet. I just, it, I know that it makes you uncomfortable that we're saying nice things. (laughs) Um, So I'm not looking at you. I'm looking over here. Bingo cards. It's not a problem. Kathy cries on the bingo card. Um, (laughs) I meant Alexis gets uncomfortable at the end. Yeah, that we could have that one too. Yeah, Um, I'm sure. If that's not on there, I'd be amazed. But really, uh, your work is an utter gift. Oh, thank you. to so many people and i'm so grateful for it um y'all who attended y'all who have purchased books from us y'all who send us sweet notes on social media thank you we are so grateful to you uh you provide so much joy in our lives and we hope we do the same for you i hope you have yeah, a yeah. great rest of your weekend and I alexis thank you for being here mary in the background caroline mm-hmm. in the background in uh, my house, you are steely-eyed missile women, and that is a very high compliment. So, <laughs> y'all take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.